I'm Nasty Lucan, Olympic gold medalist, and today it's all fair game. On today's show, Nastia opens up from rivalries. You guys were friends and then you stopped being friends. Yeah. It's sad. It was like the hardest thing. Two relationships. You guys were engaged mm -hmm. and then you postponed the wedding. How was it dealing with that? Plus, my heart broke when yeah. I heard about the Larry Nasser stuff mm -hmm. and the stories started coming out. My heart still hurts. I can't believe that they had to go through that. Your dad mm -hmm. was named in one of the impact statements. Yeah. How do you deal with that as a woman and also as his daughter? It's all next on Fair Game. Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, and I am so excited because I'm a huge gymnastics fan. During the Summer Olympics, I am glued to the TV for this sport. And joining me today is one of the greatest gymnasts of all time. She won gold at the 2008 Olympics, and I cannot get enough of her floor routines. The one and only Nastia Lucan is here. Nastia, thank you so much for coming on. And we actually met back during American Ninja Warrior when you were a celebrity and you did the course. You were partnered with one of my favorite people of all time, Barclay, and I know you guys still keep in touch. <laughs> yeah. Won $30,000 for charity. You were really serious about Ninja Warrior, and it kind of blew me away. I wasn't sure what to expect, but you took it seriously. Okay, so backtracking. So yeah. I did Dancing with the Stars with Derek Huff, mm -hmm. and so I know he did Ninja the year before. And he did well. And he did well. And so I texted him, I said, okay, like, how hard was it? And he's like, just so you know, like, it's all upper body strength. I'm like, awesome, I can't even do a pull-up anymore. <laughs> and so I was really nervous because I also know that gymnasts have done very well yes. on the- Casey Kenzaro. Yes, on yeah. the show. Um, some of my Olympic teammates that, um, you know, John Horton's been on the show. So it's like, there's a lot of pressure. And so I took it very seriously. Um, I definitely feel like so much of it was because of like my gymnastics training. It was like my grip. Like I for sure was not the strongest person out there, but it was because I was so used to like hanging on the uneven bars. I feel like that helped. <laughs> Sean Johnson was also one of my favorites to watch. Yes. I watched you guys all the time. Oh, it's my favorite thanks. thing. <laughs> you guys were friends and then you stopped being friends yeah. for a really long time because the media kind of created this idea that yeah. you should be rivals. Yeah. And you guys bought into it, which is, it's sad. It is, But yeah. do you feel like kind of that childhood innocence is stripped from you a bit and your friendships are stripped from you when you're going through all that? Yeah, absolutely. I think especially when you're 16 and 18 years old, but you're also, you know, in this little bubble for so many years that I feel like, you know, we were mature in certain ways, but then in, in other ways we were very inexperienced. And so things like that of, you know, having people, you, you start hearing things, for, whether it's from the media or, you know, is everything was a competition, you know, not just on the competition floor. And that's what like, we just started hating that because it was like, Nasty got this, John got this, Nasty's doing this, John. And it like became a competition. And it was like the hardest thing for us because we started kind of buying into that and believing all that time and time and time went on and like, we didn't talk to each other, you know? And then it was like eight years later, all of a sudden, and we realized we didn't even have each other's phone numbers anymore because we had both changed numbers over the years. And um, she reached, I was in New York City, I was going to school. I was sitting down doing an interview with the New York Times. Oh. And I remember he literally asked like a similar question like about Sean and I was like, her wedding was coming up and at the time I wasn't invited. And he got up to the restroom and I just like opened my phone and I had the longest email from her. And I was like- The same day? Lit like in the same moment. Weird. Yeah, and I emailed her right back and she was like, well, I'd re it'd really mean a lot if like you were at my wedding. And I was like, I'd love to be there. And so I was there and so we're very lucky to have each other. Yeah, and you guys are still friends now? Yes. You know, when you watch gymnastics or at least when I do, I watch the gymnasts and then compared to every other Olympian there, they just, they're so serious. <laughs> Yeah. The game face is insane, yeah. and they're so young. Mm -hmm. I feel for the gymnasts when I watch, too, because they, they are so serious, and you can tell yeah. they have so much riding on them. Yeah. And then, because they're so young, my heart broke when yeah. I heard about the Larry Nasser stuff, mm -hmm. and the stories started coming out. And I'll admit, and I think a lot of people said this, they were shocked by mm -hmm. your initial reaction that he was always really professional yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. When you look back at that now, do you understand why people might have been upset at the way that you came out. Yes, and I think for the longest time, um, I really was shocked and I was dealing with it, um, you know, first of all, before I even get into that, like, as you said, like, my heart just, like, 
still hurts just thinking mm -hmm. about it for so many of my teammates and so so many of the victims that you know I don't even know but I, I can't believe that they had to go through that and I'm still like trying to figure out like how that happened you know so many times like whether it was like parents were in the room like at the same so I think like that's why everyone was like so shocked because mm -hmm. I guess he did it in a way that like no nobody knew, you know? And um, so for me, I kind of, he was my doctor for 12 years. And so it was somebody that I trusted. Yeah. And you know, the hardest, some of like the hardest things is like, you know, no way, like people will say like, no way, like your dad didn't know he was your coach, he was there. And I'm like, do you really think that my dad would trust, you know, some man with his daughter if he knew he was doing that? Like, that's like disgusting. Like, and so I think for me, I was dealing with it and processing it in a way with, yes, I wasn't a victim of his sexual abuse, but also I trusted this man. And so it was very hard to kind of process all of that. Well, and for you, this was really tough for you because this is a guy who essentially held you together. Oh my God, yes. He's responsible for a lot of the success in yeah. your career. And yeah. then you find out that this happens. And I know you were really stressed out at the time. And then it comes out, your dad mm -hmm. was named in one of the impact statements. Yeah. How do you deal with that? How do yeah. you process that as a woman and also as his daughter? Yeah, so like my dad was my coach, so he was always there. My heart goes out to all of the victims and I can't imagine what they've had to go through and continue to have to go through on a daily basis. But at the same time, um, you know, the athlete that kind of spoke out and named him in her statement, um, he's never coached her ever before. Why and would so she do that? I'm not sure. Um, and I, you know, I haven't had the chance to talk with her. Um, yeah, so I think like that's hard. I think just um, as a daughter, you know, it's you like, to to I'm also kind of like, you can take stabs at me all you want. Yeah. <laughs> but the second you mess with my family, yeah. and I think like that was like the hardest part for all of us. Um, I think I was just most surprised because it wasn't, um, even from an athlete that he ever coached. So it was a little strange. Well, it's so hard when you said that you, you can take stabs at me, but not at my family. Mm -hmm. You live your life so publicly now. Yeah. And you went to NYU, which is yes. so cool that yes. you went there. I love that school. Yeah. Um, but everyone knows you. You're Nastia. Mm -hmm. Why was it so important for you to go to NYU? And then how was it dealing with the fact that everyone knew who you were? I would have to say, like, living in New York, like, no one really cares, like, who you are, what you've done. And I feel like when I transition and I retired from gymnastics, I truly just needed to figure out who I was, like who Nastia was, not, okay, you know, Nastia Lucan, the Olympic gymnast, Nastia Lucan, the girl in Dancing with the Stars, or American Ninja Warrior, or whatever. It was just <laughs> like, who am I as a person, you know? And so that took, like, it took a lot of time, but I feel like going to school and living in New York, like, I was able to do that. Yeah. Part of you is, is being a person. You found a guy, you guys were engaged. Mm -hmm. um, and then you had to make the decision, you postponed the wedding. Yeah. Usually that's a decision that people make in private. I know. It's not something that everyone <gasps> gets to know and be a part yeah. of. How was it dealing with that? You know, it's it's definitely challenging, especially when you go some, through something so personal. It hasn't been easy, but I feel like it's also been like a huge learning lesson. and. And being able to have those people in your life that are going to support you, you know, through the great times, but also the times where like you need your friends to be there for you. Yeah. So well, a great thing that came out of that relationship was Grinder. You yeah, guys co-founded yeah. that together, the app. Can you yeah. tell me what that is? Yeah, it's been so exciting because both of us really um, relied heavily growing up. He played hockey, me and gymnastics, and relying on the fact of having great mentors in your life. And so both in sports, but also in life and relationships and business. And so this next generation, like I truly just felt so passionate that they needed, you know, a place to go to and a community behind them and to be able to support them and to not just share you know, your stories about success or like your highs, because mm -hmm. like that's easy to do. And that's kind of what we all do on social media, right? Highlights. We kind of give the highlights of our life. And, yeah. and that's fine, but I also think it's so important for this next generation to know like, that's not real life. Like you and I didn't wake up looking like this. You know what I mean? Like we have people that help us and- um, Yes, there's a whole hair crew. There's a whole team there, here. Makeup. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And um, you know, and so I think just being able to kind of 
for these young girls and these young women to kind of understand that look like we go through breakups, we go through times where we're not confident or, you know, we're not, you know, happy with our bodies or, you know, we don't always eat healthy and we, you know, it's <laughs> like everyone thinks that we live like this very put together perfect life and no that's way. not the case. Nope. Well, we can go eat a pizza when yes. we're done with this. I would love to and I'm yes. going to download the app. <laughs> yes. More with Olympic champion Nastia Lukin when we come back. Coming up, what was she thinking? My dad called me yelling at me and saying, do you know you could have died doing that? That's next. Welcome back to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, hanging out with gold medal winning gymnast, Nastia Lukin. Nastia has almost a million followers on Instagram. So it's time for a segment called, What Were You Thinking? I'm gonna show her a picture that she posted on Instagram and she will reveal what was going on in her mind at the moment. Are you ready? I'm ready. I've got some good ones here. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. This is the first one. You said this is just another piece of magic. What were you thinking? You're wearing five inch yeah. boots. Um, I've been shield boots. So there's like some magic behind that one. And Tyler Shields, the incredible photographer um, who shot this, would um, basically the saying, like, if I told you, I'd have to kill you, you know? Okay. <laughs> um, but he had this incredible vision, and I'm actually doing a flip. I'm not going to tell you much more, but. Is this photoshopped? <laughs> I'm no. actually this upside down. Okay, I, you're I doing am this. upside down. Okay. Um, a lot of people on my Instagram were like, oh, were you doing a pack salto, which is a skill in bars? No, I wish I could still do that. I'm like, absolutely not. Um, I was doing a back flip. So. I'm impressed. <laughs> totally impressed. This one I know very well. I think I was sitting just a couple feet away. This is you on American Ninja Warrior. And your caption on this was about body shaming. And I loved that. Yeah. So what were you thinking here? So it's really interesting because I have been body shamed on both ends. So when I what? finished... Yeah, when I finished competing, or right after the Olympics, um, you know, when you stop training seven hours a day, six days a week, and you finally go through puberty, and you <laughs> go through normal things, I gained like 30 pounds, um, and everyone was kind of like telling me that I was fat and overweight, and um, you know, That's yeah, insane, I had gained weight, but, but it was, as we were kind of saying earlier, it was like, you have to go, like, this. these are normal things that every girl goes through, but doing it in the public eye was not easy. And then now kind of going through it on the opposite side of being like, you're too skinny, or why do you work out so much? You're already too skinny. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you can't, can't win. win. You yeah. can't win. So, yeah. And by the way, the people who are saying that are sitting in a basement somewhere. Behind nothing, a computer screen yeah, or on a phone. with nothing better yeah. to do. Yeah. But if you actually confront them about it, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm yeah, or I didn't fan. think you were going to see that. Okay. I'm like, I see it. I hope this is photoshopped just for safety purposes. Okay, okay. So I would be nervous for you. My dad, when I <laughs> sent him this photo, he called me yelling at me and saying, do you know you could have died doing that? I'm like, dad, dad, like, relax. It wasn't real. So I did, that was the view. It was on, in New York City, on the top of the Waldorf um, Hotel. And they created this ledge. It was like that concrete ledge, basically. And I did a handstand, but it was on the ground. Okay. And then they like Photoshopped it. And they, oh, they took a picture of the view and they put me up. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one I really love. I love pizza. But you're in Boston, though. Oh, yeah. I lived in Boston. I, I didn't love the pizza there. I, to be honest, that wasn't the best pizza. Yeah. But I... We can't see that was pizza at, it was. <laughs> I know, I'm like, sorry. That was at Na our national championships from Boston this year. And we had just... I had worked, like, from 5 a.m. Um, until... Cause I was setting up for our Grander Summit that day you know, commentating live. I think that was around 11 o'clock at night. We were stuck in the parking lot because they wouldn't open the gates because all the pedestrians were like crossing. Yeah. And they're like, you have to wait here till all 20,000 people get out of the arena. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just eat my pizza. <laughs> Good and, for yeah. you. Yeah. So all the body shamers can just yeah, look, I'm like, look at you eating the your real pizza. Me. Yeah. I love this one. Oh. It's you and your dad. Yeah. I can't remember when that was, but um, I think that was after he had resigned from his position um, as the national team coordinator. And what I have um, realized is at the end of the day, the most important thing is family. Um, and, you know, no matter what anyone says about you or your family or anything going on, um, everything else goes away and you'll always have each other. It's a great picture. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. We've got more with Nastia right after this. 
Coming up, Nastia flips over the one that got away. I had the biggest crush on him. He was like my teenage like crush. I was like, I had no game. I just like Oh, from that's afar. really cute. That's next. Welcome back to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy here with gymnastics superstar Nastia Lucan. And now it's time for First in 10, where she's going to answer 10 questions that all have to do with firsts. This is really fun. Are you ready for this one? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> First celebrity that people mistake you for? Oh, I've gotten Hayden Panettiere okay. a few times. Yeah. I get that. Or, or a figure skater. You do kind of look like a figure skater. They're just like, I think also gymnastics and figure skating are yeah. like winter, summer, and they're like, oh my God, you're like that famous figure skater. I'm like, sure. Sometimes I think of Tara Lipinski as a gymnast. So I guess Yeah, so I ways. think it just, yeah. Okay. First text message you sent this morning. Do you remember? Oh yes, my friend Jenny, um, she lives in New York, so she's three hours ahead, and she texted me at 4.30 this morning, and I said, hi, not awake yet. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny, yeah. for waking Thanks, me Jenny. up. <laughs> First time you noticed an opponent cheating? Ooh. Not gonna go into the whole story, but the <laughs> 2008 Olympics. Okay. Um, just like age. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about there. I mean, I don't have proof, so I guess like. I think I it thought. was a lot of people thought the same okay. thing. Okay. <laughs> First person you'd trust with a secret? Probably my friend Jenny. Did you tell her a secret this morning? I did. Can you tell me? No. <laughs> it's just not. No. No problem. First food you eat when you go back to Texas? Ooh, um, probably Mexican. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first drink you order on girls' night out? Oh, um, I would say like a spicy margarita. Oh, I know a really good place for spicy okay. margaritas. We'll talk later. Yes. First thing you did when you got home after winning the gold in Beijing? Slept. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, when we landed, they like there were fire trucks and helicopters surrounding, and I was like, "Oh my gosh! Like, I hope everybody's okay. What's going on?" And they then said it was for us. First show on your DVR. I record all of the gymnastics that um, that I actually commentate on because I like watching it back um, just do? for educational. I no, I don't, <laughs> but I do. I can't do that. I. I I wish I didn't, but I also feel like that's the only way that I'll learn. Oh. Like, I know, I hate my voice. Do you like what voice. you see or do you hate everything about it? I hate everything. I hate like my voice. I hate sometimes what I've said. There, there are very few times where I'm like, oh yeah, that was good. You know, normally I'm like, why did you say that? Or like something okay. like that. But, but you're still but, learning from it. Yes, okay. and I think like, I think that goes from gymnastics. So like the same thing, like I'd watch all my routines and I'd point out every single mistake or everything, but I think that's how you learn is, you know, watching the not so good or watching your mistakes, so. Whatever works. Yeah. First celebrity you met who made you nervous? Uh, I met Jesse McCartney, oh. like right after the Olympics, we actually did a show with him and like I had the biggest crush on him. He was like my, teenage like crush. I okay. Think. Did you get his number? No. <laughs> I was like, I had no game. Like I didn't even, I don't even think I like introduced myself. I just like oh, looked from that's afar. that's really cute. Yeah. Maybe he's watching now. <laughs> Hi Jesse. Is kidding. he married? I don't know. I don't know. First thing you'd hide if your mom came to visit? Uh, like nothing because I, she's like such a cleaner that like she, she's like just so helpful that she wants to like clean and tidy everything up. Like she'd find it nice. right away. So yeah, I don't think I've really ever hit. Oh, I, I hit a book from her once because she told me, this sounds very sketchy, but it's not. She told me to read the book, The Secret. Okay. At, right before the Olympics. And I was like, I feel like at that age too, anytime your mom tells you to read a book, you're just like, okay, yeah. whatever. And then I saw Oprah did a whole show on the secret, and so I went out and bought it, but I didn't want her to know that I would have like taken Aww. her advice. Yeah, it was stupid. That's but That's um, cute, yeah. though. I've yeah. been there, I yeah. get it. <laughs> Coming up, one of the most epic first pitches ever. Everything was like wet and slippery, and I'm like, oh my God, can you imagine I'm gonna do this flip, I'm gonna fall on my butt. That's next. Monday, Meta World Peace. I was partying a lot. Still was dysfunctional in the locker room. 
The Malice in the Palace was an experience I never want to sure go was. through again. You actually became friends with the fan, John Green. Yeah, I'm cool with the fan who kind of lost me a lot of money. That's Monday. I'm Christine Leahy, back with Nastia Lucan. And so before we go, there's one thing that I've wanted to ask you. I'm a Cubs fan, and you threw an amazing pitch, really creative. What gave you the idea to do that? <laughs> okay, I think it started from the fact that I was very nervous that I wasn't going to be able to throw the ball far oh, enough. And so, so I'm like, first. yeah, so I'm like, how do I get closer without just like walking like to the middle and it looking like I can't really throw a ball. And then I was like, oh, and then I'm a gymnast, obviously. And so I'm like, I wonder if I could do a flip. And then I got really scared because there was a rain delay and everything was like wet mm -hmm. and slippery. And I'm like, oh my God, can you imagine I'm gonna do this flip? I'm gonna fall on my butt. And so then I like freaked out and I was like, maybe don't do it. Maybe. And then I was like, no, I'd rather like do the flip and like maybe mess up than throw, I don't know. It was so, awesome. Yeah. I, I didn't was one of my favorite up, pitches yeah. I've ever seen. Thanks. Very smart. <laughs> Looking ahead to 2020, the Olympics um, in Tokyo, is there any name that you think we should keep our eyes out for in gymnastics? Yeah, Simone Biles. Um, you know, she was obviously the star of the 2016 Olympics, won four gold medals, and she is actually now, believe it or not, better than she was in Rio, which being in Rio and watching her, like I thought that wasn't going to be possible. And now just seeing how much better she is, she's improved her difficulty and is doing skills that you you just watch and you're just like, how do you do that? Um, but it's also like the way that she performs the skills. It's just so much better than everyone else. And I think um, from what I've heard around the world, everyone's kind of like, all right, well, we're, now we're just gonna shoot for you know the silver and bronze because she just truly is exceptionally just incredible. Nastia, thanks so much. I'm Christine Leahy. We'll see you next time on Fair Game.